When the Tesla Model 3 began official deliveries last year, first to Tesla and SpaceX employees before later starting deliveries to US-based reservation holders, the all-electric sedan was only available with rear-wheel drive and fitted with Tesla's long-range 310-mile battery pack. And if you didn't want to wait for your car, you also had to tick option boxes to get the premium package too, raising the car's price anywhere from ten dollars to $25,000 over the headline $35,000 price tag that Tesla promised the Entry Level 3 would cost. Aside from upsetting those who wanted the Entry Level Model 3 and forcing them to wait a lot longer to get their car, focusing on producing just one drivetrain and battery pack option to start with has dramatically helped Tesla to simplify its initial vehicle process. But with Tesla Model 3 production now estimated to be touching 500 vehicles per day from Tesla's Fremont factory, Tesla is now ready to start producing other Model 3 variants. And over the weekend, in typical Elon Musk style, Tesla's very own Tony Stark revealed specifications for the next two Model 3 variants to be built, an all-wheel drive Model 3 and a performance-tweaked all-wheel drive Model 3. While that does mean the entry-level headline-grabbing $35,000 US dollar Model 3 with the standard 220-mile, 355-kilometer range battery pack looks to be the last variant to get production, it does mean that those with extra cash can now opt for a higher-end Model 3 if they so wish. According to Musk, both the all-wheel drive Model 3 and the performance all-wheel drive Model 3 will feature the same three-phase, six-pole AC permanent magnet motor found in the rear-wheel drive Model 3, but will add an AC induction motor to drive the front wheels. This might seem very strange since the two motors operate in a very different way to one another, but it's kind of interesting. You see, the Tesla Model S and Model X, and the Roadster before them, all used AC induction motors. At the time, it's likely that these were chosen over traditional permanent magnet motors for several reasons. First, they don't use rare earth metals, which historically have been expensive and difficult to get hold of in large quantities. And second, while more energy inefficient than an AC permanent magnet motor, AC induction motors traditionally can produce more torque at higher speeds than AC permanent magnet motors. Since Tesla has always looked to keep its motors small and its gearing low so that it can produce the best power for the least physical space, AC induction motors have always been the go-to. But the Model 3's design and requirements are slightly different to other Teslas to date, meaning Tesla prioritized efficiency. Permanent magnet AC motors are far more efficient than AC induction motors because they only have to generate one electromagnetic field, not two, and unit cost permanent magnet motors are a lot cheaper today than they once were, so it picked a permanent magnet motor instead. Specifically, a partial permanent magnet motor design that still produces reasonable torque at high speed, but I'm not going into the details of how and why here. In the dual motor Model 3s, however, using an AC induction motor up front not only helps Tesla save on space, there's really not a lot of space up there unless you want to make the front smaller, and it also allows it to produce a higher power Model 3 variant without sacrificing much range. Which brings me nicely to the specs. Tesla says the Model 3 dual motor will retain the 310 mile range of the long range rear wheel drive Model 3, as will the performance dual motor. But it will slash the 0 to 60 times from 5.1 seconds for the standard rear wheel drive Model 3 to 4.5 seconds for the dual motor and 3.5 seconds for the performance dual motor. While the dual motor retains the same 140 miles per hour, 225 kph top speed as the single motor long range model, the performance dual motor gets a 155 mile per hour, 250 kph top speed. Aside from that, there's very little difference to the standard rear wheel drive Model 3, at least in terms of specs. Trim wise, however, if you opt for the performance option, that is, you'll get larger 20-inch wheels and carbon fiber rear spoiler, as well as the option to choose a performance-only black and white interior package. But now to the bad bit. Price of the dual motor Model 3 will add another US dollars to the price of the already expensive Model 3 long range, while opting for the performance dual motor will push that price up to US$86,000 if you pick every single option, including both autopilot options. And that makes the Model 3 quite possibly one of the most widely priced cars out there today. At least it will when Tesla launches that entry-level Model 3 with standard battery pack and no options ticked. 
As for that vehicle, when asked, Musk said that the standard Model 3 would arrive three to six months after Tesla reaches its 5,000 Model 3 per week target, meaning no earlier than late this year or perhaps even early next. The reason why? Profitability. In a candid tweet, Musk told one follower that shipping the standard Model 3 right away would cause Tesla to lose money and die. That's even before we look at overseas markets, because while Tesla has now officially begun Model 3 deliveries in Canada, it's likely to take a long time before we see Model 3s elsewhere in the world, especially if you're in a right-hand drive country. So for now, you should probably hunker down and wait a little longer. For those who live in the US and who are hoping to get a tax credit to help with their base Model 3 then, this latest news about base Model 3 rollout isn't very good, since Tesla is most likely to push through that 200,000th EV limit set by the US federal government long before it ships its first entry-level Model 3. And that means that while you may get some tax credits, since they're ramped down rather than cut completely, you certainly won't get a base Model 3 for an effective price of under 28 grand. Sorry. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to both this channel and Transport Evolved Take Two. And of course, if you'd like to help this channel keep going, please consider donating through one of the links below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and keep evolving. Mm -hmm.